This is Dr. Sanjay Zhodpe. I am the Vice President of Public Health Foundation of India based in New Delhi and also the Director of Indian Institute of Public Health Delhi. It is indeed my pleasure to talk to you about how to write and publish a research paper. However, before we actually understand the dynamics of writing and publishing a research paper, it would be useful to look at the research spiral. The research spiral tells us about that how research moves. For example, you begin research with conceptualization of the research idea and then subsequently carry out that research through a conduction mode where you do a literature search, you define the objectives of the studies, you also articulate the research question that you wanted to pose for, you decide on sample size, sampling processes, then you con actually conduct the study collect the data, analyze the data, you infer the results and then at the end of that what you need to do is that you plan for the dissemination of the research findings and for the dissemination of the results findings you have to write papers. However, there are several ways that you can disseminate the findings of your study. You can write a report, you can have a departmental and institutional presentations, you can also participate in dissemination meetings, you can go to the conferences and make the presentations of the findings that you have generated through the research. You also at times like to make a presentation to the media, presentation to a special groups who are important and key stakeholders of the process. However, the most important thing remains as a part of the dissemination of results is a research publication and that too in a peer reviewed journal articles. So, that is critical. So, let us talk about and focus in today's talk about research publications in peer reviewed journals. So, let us first understand what is the intended end point of any research publication. One must understand that scientific work is not complete until the results are published because that is the end point that we always look for and therefore, communication of result remains integral part of a research process. One must also understand that this is how the knowledge is presented and stored and it also gives all of us a professional recognition. We all are recognized by our publications because most of these publications are in public domain and people look at these publications and then recognize us as professionally. Not only that professional recognition is critically associated with the research publications, but all these publications also help us to acquire grants enhance our jobs reputation and therefore, it is very widely said that publish or perish is the one of the mantras of research publications. However, please remember it is also critical to budget a dissemination cost, publication cost when you frame the budget for the research work because it is critical and nowadays several journals have started charging for publications. So, it is important that you have budgeted for that. Now, let us focus on what are the goals in writing papers. Why do people write papers? Why do we write research publications? Because that is how we contribute to the medical knowledge. That is how we contribute to the development of the policies. And not only that it is important, but it also gives a personal satisfaction by influencing thinking or a policy in a particular field where we are working. And of course, other practical issues that we just talked about that CV building and promotion and tenure for job work, professional recognition, all these are important issues associated with the goals in writing papers. But one must also remember quantity versus quality. At times people are after quantity that I have n number of publications. Of course, quantity is important, but it is also important to understand when you write papers that you are publishing good papers in good peer reviewed journals with very high impact factors. So, even one quality publication would be equivalent of at times 3 to 5 or even more number of publications which are not very good. So, it is very important that we ensure quality in research publications. But let us understand now how the publication procedure happens. Publication process starts with completing and analyzing the study because unless we complete the study, we analyze the data, we will not be able to 
publish the findings of the study. So, the first step is to complete the study and then analyze the findings. And one must ensure that we avoid the time lag between the completion of study and writing it out. If there is a longer time gap, then there is a possibility that you just forget things that what you had done for. And therefore, it is important that we avoid the time lag between the completion of study and writing it out. Then the next time comes about the selection of the journal. You have to select a journal which is appropriate for publication of the findings and we will talk about it in more detail subsequently. But once the journal is selected, then you have to prepare a manuscript. The next step involves then submission and at the end of the journal, then there is a peer review process. At times, you get findings and you get uh, suggestions and comments from the journal back to you and giving an opportunity to revise and resubmit your findings and article. And then finally, you have to wait for final editorial decision. So, that is how the publication procedure is all about. But please remember that scientific writing is not an easy task. It is a tedious and painstaking process and you have to invest a time into the whole process of writing papers. And if you look at from submissions point of view, then you would find that there are mainly two types of submissions. Some of them are invited submissions and then spontaneous submissions. Invited submissions in the capacity that you have gained a professional knowledge, you have reached heights professionally and then you are invited to write editorials or you are invited to write certain narrative reviews or you are invited to submit your work to a journals. However, most of us do more spontaneous journal publications that we complete the findings of the study and then we want to publish our papers and then we submit them to the journals. And if you look at the various types of submissions that we can be confronted are like editorials, mostly the editorials are invited one. But there are commentaries and review articles also and original research paper remains an important area where most of us would be submitting research papers. At times when the studies are ongoing, even the early reports are also uh, accepted for publication purposes. At times you can write research letters also which are published in the journals. Then you have case reports and briefs and there are several other ways that you can look at from the publication point of view. However, when you write a research paper, you have to answer three important questions. The first one is decide why you want to write. The goal of writing a paper should be very clear to you. What is the purpose that you want to write a paper? That should be very clear to you. The next question is decide for whom do you want to write. So, who is your target audience? That is important. Are the peer researchers or the stakeholders or the policy makers? Who are the target audience that you have to keep in mind while writing a paper? The third question comes about where do you want to publish your paper and that relates to properly selecting a journal for submission of your article. Now, looking at writing a research paper, the systems and processes involved into that. How do you do that actually? The first thing that you have to keep in mind is that you have to structure your paper. Structure in paper mostly in IMRAD formats that we all are familiar with like introductions, methods, results and discussion and then finally followed with references. But it is useful that we write sections and how do we do that? We can even divide the work amongst ourselves as the group of authors where somebody writes on introduction, the person who brings expertise on methods writes the method section, somebody writes the result section discussion section is taken care of by some another colleague. So, that is how you can write the sections wise. So, you have to begin with introduction, then methods and then results and then discussion. But be sure that you are completely satisfied with the write up. Unless you are satisfied, you rewrite it and therefore, I said it, if you are not still satisfied, you again rewrite it. And it is also important that at our stage, at our end, we can also get it peer reviewed. You can ask your colleagues, your faculty colleagues or your professor that they can look at it and they can have a look at the paper that has been written up, so that somebody can provide you the comments to improve the quality of the paper. And then finally, it comes to a submission of paper that you submit for the publication and obviously, you have to be prepared for the consequences. The consequences could be either, you know, paper is accepted, at times the paper is not accepted, but one has to be prepared for these consequences. Now, let us 
come to a point that how to choose appropriate journal because that is important. Choosing an appropriate journal remains a very critical step in the whole process of writing paper and therefore, we say stop and think who might benefit most from your idea because you have a research idea and you have translated that into a research projects and the findings are with you. Now, you wanted to present these findings to uh, the, the, the target audience who would be most benefited from the results of the studies. You can also do a guideline reviews. You can look at uh, some journals and then see that where does it fit into for that matter. Assess the relevance of your work to a particular journal. At times like for example, you are doing a study in the context of tuberculosis. The focus is on tuberculosis, but are you looking at the programmatic aspect of tuberculosis? You may like to select a journal which is more interested to publish papers related to revised national tuberculosis control program in India for that matter. But suppose you are doing a study on tuberculosis where your focus is on maybe on mycobacterium tuberculosis, a much more a molecular paper, you will have a journal which is more appropriate to that aspect of tuberculosis. So, even if for a thematic area, you will have to choose a journal which is more appropriate for a particular aspect of a paper that you have worked for. And then you can shortlist those most likely outlets because you may think of three journals and five journals and then you have to see that which is the best for a paper that you wanted to submit. You also can look at, at the recent issues of a particular journal so that you find them that you know I fit into a particular journal and then you know this is the journal that is likely to publish and then you take that forward. However, while selecting journal keep in mind certain issues. The issue number one is that you please remember that you are publishing in indexed journal. Several there are databases of journals which are available like Medline and Embase and there are so many other databases now available. One has to ensure that you are publishing a journal which is indexed in a databases. So, it is much more widely available subsequently for the uh, purposes of the research that has been presented for policy making and influencing the policy in a particular field. Second important point is that you have to identify whether the focus of your paper is on content or on methodology because there are certain journals which would give much more preference on some if you are discussing some methodologic aspects for that matter. But at times if you have a focus on a particular content then appropriate selection of journal remains critical. Similarly, you will also have to choose between a specialist journal and general journal. Suppose in the internal medicine, Journal of Indian Medical Association may be a more general so journal, but suppose you wanted to publish uh, in a very specific area like for example, in tuberculosis, then you would be choosing for Indian Journal of Tuberculosis. Similarly, setting of your study whether it is a clinical setting or a community setting will also help you to choose appropriate journals. Like for example, Indian Journal of Community Medicine, Indian Journal of Public Health, they would be publishing most many articles mostly focusing on population focus. Similarly, national and international, one has to choose that which is the better audience for you. At times, the results are in a larger global context useful, you would go for international journal. But at times, you feel that this addresses a much more national priority and for my audience, the audience for my paper would be much more national than I would go for a national one. Finally, it is most important that you look for the impact factor of the journals because whatever you are publishing, it is important that it is published in high impact factor journals, so that it is much more respected and it is considered as reputed publication and impact factor also relates with the articles which are published in the journals, which will have much more contribution towards policy making and program contributions. However, remember that you have to make early decisions because that remains the critical. Now, how do you start once you have selected the journal? and you decided that this is most probably a journal outlet that you have decided for publishing the findings of your study. Now, how, how do you begin the work with? First thing could be meeting of investigators. Investigators, I mean that the authors of the paper like those who are involved in the research project and ensure that research work is completed because it is critical that you ensure research work is completed because you cannot publish incomplete research work. The concentration is important, you decide where can you focus. At workplace for that matter sometimes there are more disturbances and you will not be able to concentrate. So, you would prefer to be 
calm places where you can spend time and it is variable from individual to individual. People also write manuscripts on flights also for that matter. It also depends on time that which is a much more convenient time. Some people feel that early morning you are fresh, fresh with the ideas and you can articulate your thoughts properly and you may like to focus in the early morning. But some are, some people would prefer that in the evening hours they have much more concentration. Again is variable to variable, but you have to choose the place and time which suits you and where you can concentrate in a better way, that is more important. Plan a realistic timeline because you cannot mess up with so many papers at point in time and working on a manuscript you need to decide that maybe in next 3 months, next 6 months that I wanted to finish that paper and if you are working simultaneously on many manuscripts everything can be derailed, so that is critical. Keep everything ready because when you start writing a manuscript you need literature ready, references which are available and handy to you all the data which is being carried out, analysis being carried out, those findings are available to you, all the information that is required for writing a paper is available to you at times, dummy tables and the information in the tables is available to you and in the current uh, days everybody types on the computer because you can actually edit and revise as frequently as frequently. This is the format that we generally recommend and most of the paper, most of the journals would expect. It is called as IMRAD format introduction, methods, results and discussion. Now, what do you focus when you write on introduction? Why was this work undertaken? That is the focus of introduction. But when you talk about methods, you talk about how was this research was carried out? How was it done? That is the question that you wanted to address through methods. In results, what do you present? What did you find? You the findings of the study are presented into the results. Similarly, finally at the discussion, you try to discuss the findings of your study where you try to answer a question, what does it imply? So, you have to keep in mind when you write these sections about those issues. Now, let us talk about issues in authorship. Generally, we would recommend to follow guidelines because authorship is select this the not only that the sequence of the authorship is important, but who is to be included in the authorship, who is to be acknowledged is also critical and important. And therefore, we say that follow International Committee of Medical Journal Editors guideline. The ICMGE guidelines are widely available. One can use these guidelines when you decide on the authors. Think, plan and clarify a lot ahead of time because it can create a confusion, people may have a divergent views, somebody feels that I have contributed significantly, but my name is appearing at the later stage. So, it is better that we look at the manuscript, look at the contribution of all the authors and decide the sequence of the author. It is also important that be forthwith and truthful. There is no diplomacy here. If somebody who has contributed significantly has to come forward and those who have not contributed significantly, they can be at a later stage. It is also important to consider the sequence of the authors. Does it justify the role of every author? Because sometimes there is a very minor contribution which may not justify for the paper. Therefore, you can acknowledge that person as an in the acknowledgments instead of putting as the author and the order that it, it should be the joint decision of all the co-authors. And you should not be dealing with is everyone happy? because that is not the question, that is not the question that we wanted to address when we decide authorship. The peers episode very briefly I wanted to mention is related to the fraud of the research that uh, couple of colleagues in a particular department had done a research and they published findings and then they went to their professor and person who is heading the department and saying that we are publishing these findings and even not knowing anything and uh, his contribution into the papers, but they requested him if we can put his name on a paper and he said he felt that maybe these are the departmental colleagues and they had done the work or without having involvement into the paper, he allowed his name to be put as author and subsequently it was found that that was a fraud research. And then the head of the department tells that I was just asked and my name was put, but I had not contributed to this, but that does not solve the purpose because your name is there means you are owning the 
responsibility of the content and everything related to that paper. It should not be done. Neither give or not take a research as authorship gift. It is not that something that you do a research, you include my name there and I do a research where I include your name into my papers. That is not the purpose that is going to be solved. So, that is not recommended. Each author should have participated sufficiently in the work to take the public responsibility of the content if you wanted to be author on the paper. So, that is what is the criteria that we follow. Generally, the authorship credit is given as for the substantial contribution to the conception and design or analysis and interpretation of the data, drafting the article or revising it critically for important intellectual content and final approval of the version to be published and all these conditions that I have listed must be met and then and then only you can claim to be author on a paper. Sometimes participation solely on like for example, uh, related to acquisition of funding that I got the grant and therefore, I should be there or the collection of the data or generally like being heading the institution or a department you have just provided some uh, supervision of the research group. These all conditions that do not justify authorship and editors therefore, say that authors to justify the assignments of authorship. Nowadays, several journals have started asking the contribution of each of the author listed on the paper to tell about that how they have contributed in a particular research project. Now, after having talked about this, let us come to a title page because this is the first page of your manuscript which generally deals with uh, the title of the article, who are the authors on the paper, qualifications of the authors, then authors institutional affiliations are to be mentioned, name of the department and institutions where the work was carried out also needs to be mentioned and also it specifies the address for subsequent correspondence related to a paper. So, the author who would be corresponding needs to provide his or her more details, a complete details in the name and work address and all other email and everything has to be there. The title page also needs to have at times the request about the reprint request or nowadays now everything is digital. So, this has disappeared, but still there are some print journals where you have to provide information related to the reprint requests. Sometimes you also have got and procured grants or equipments and drugs for carrying out the study that support needs to be mentioned and acknowledged that also should come here. If you have some disclaimers, this is an opportunity where you can mention about the disclaimers. They also need a short running head or a foot line generally around 40 characters to run around as, as a manuscript that also needs to be provided here only. You need to also provide the word count because generally the papers will ask like 4000, 4500, 5000 words limit. Different journals have a variable word limit and therefore, the word count is critical which needs to be mentioned. And these two title pages basically sometimes like in some journals like uh, AJPH, the second title page at where you provide only the title of the article. And please remember this is the first page of your manuscript. Now, let us move on to how do you decide upon the title for the paper. When you write a paper, the first thing comes to your mind is that what should be the title of my paper. And please remember that the first impressions are strong impressions. And how do you do that? You can write few articles, few titles for an article and then you see that my keywords are reflected in the title which I am going to present. And then amongst all those you can choose one which you find is much more catchy, much more interesting, which is concise but informative and which captures the keywords that you have mentioned and also it should convey the contents of the paper and therefore, I said that the keywords are critical, anybody would look for the keywords in the title. After having decided on the title, you move on to a next part of the paper that is abstract and keywords. Abstract generally is in two formats, either it is a structured abstract like an IMRAD format at times that you have to provide the title and objective introduction and then objectives and methods and results at times conclusions that is a much more structured abstract. Uh, there are some journals where they have a running abstract where you can have unstructured abstract. 
For unstructured abstract and structured abstracts, the word limit is generally specified by the journals. Location of generally the abstract is on the second page and some journals put the abstract even at the end also. However, you remember that you write abstract after writing a complete manuscript because abstract presents the manuscript zist which you have written completely. Contents of the abstract that what should be there in the abstract generally like very quickly you can mention about in a brief couple of sentences about a background of the study, the objective of the study, you need to specify the design that you wanted or you have used for then setting of the study the participants, interventions, main outcome measures and then very quickly and briefly talking about the results and conclusions. At times some information on statistical analysis and laboratory procedures is important. But one of the challenge of writing abstract is that you have very limited words and you have to fit into the information that all we talked about from rational to conclusions and results to fit into those number of words which are available to you. You have to keep certain points and uh, in mind while you deal with this particular issue and which I mentioned first that write the abstract after you finish the paper because this is the summary of your paper. So, unless you finish a paper how can you write an abstract for that matter. It provides the zest of the work that has been done. It should be very clear and simple. Please do not put too many extra details there. Be economical with the word and do not forget that your abstract will be read and used more than the article because your abstract will be indexed by several databases and then lot of people will read your abstracts and people will read the abstracts and then make a decision whether they wanted to read your complete manuscript or not. Therefore, abstract should have that power to attract attention of the readers. Now, let us talk about at the bottom of the abstract we also need to provide keywords and they are provided below the abstract. Sometimes some journals require you request you a separate set of keywords, but 3 to 10 keywords or short phrases are required for indexing purposes and this keyword should be the actually key messages which are emerging from your theme. Like for example, in index medicus in Medline database uh, they use the terms for MESH that is medical subject headings and they use keywords as MESH to identify the articles. So, one has to select keywords quite uh, seriously so that by using the keywords people should be able to locate your article that is what is the importance of the keywords is all about. Now, let us move on to how do you write introduction that is the first part of your manuscript and you remember a bad beginning makes a bad ending because your introduction is something which is a beginning of your manuscript. What should it contain for? It should contain the purpose of your paper that why did you undertake a particular research? What is the hypothesis? What are the research questions? What is the rationale? What is the background? You have to provide the problem statement. You have to also justify the relevance of the work that you had carried out. Why this study was carried out? So, the need should be reflected there. It could also have brief review of literature, but it is not recommended extensively that you talk about the literature, but wherever necessary you can mention certain sentences from the literature and it also should talk about what are the expected implications. And the points that you need to remember while writing is uh, introduction is that only give strictly pertinent references. There is no need that providing lot of literature references here. No extensive review of literature is recommended as a part of the introduction. Do not include the data or conclusions from the work that is being reported should be a short because longer introductions are generally not encouraged and generally they are not recommended for maybe around 1 to 3 paragraphs and should be written in the present tense. Please remember that you have to write the introduction in a present tense. Now, let us move on to the next very important section methods section. What should it contain? You need to talk about study design whether it is descriptive study or whether you had carried out analytical study or even in within the analytical study whether it is a case control study or a cohort study or it is an experimental study where you talk about various types of clinical trials or it is a diagnostic evaluation study or it is a program evaluation you have to specify here. In the setting you have to specify whether the study was carried out at workplace or in a hospital setting or in a community that needs to be specified here. 
duration of the study is important and not only in terms of saying it is one year study or 18 month study, but even the start date and end date of the study is important. Because some studies carried out several years old may not appeal to the journals if you wanted to present in a present. You have to also specify the sample size and the power analysis and the sampling related issues of a particular study. Because these are all methodological issues. How did you select subjects? Your inclusion criteria needs to be very specified. What are the study variables? Both outcome variables and predictor variables. You have to specify them. And more important is that even the measurement related issues of the variables also should be specified very clearly. There is an opportunity here in method section. You can also talk about the data collection techniques. You can also mention about the study instruments, the tools that you have used for collecting the data. The contents continues like for example, measurement devices. At times you use some technical procedure. You have to provide the details of that technical procedure when you talk about a technical procedure that has been used in a particular study. It depends on the design of the study, but if it is a clinical trial and you have done randomization, then that information needs to be provided here. Suppose you have conducted a case control study where you had done a matching of cases with controls, then you need to mention that also. The interventions, follow up, informed consent, all these issues needs to be reflected in methods section. More important is also to provide information on statistical methods that, that you have used for the analytical purposes. If you had conducted a pilot study as a part of as a prelude to the original study, then you need to mention that also as a part of the method section. And ethics and institutional review board clearances are critical and they are needs to be mentioned as a part of the methods. The sequence of the steps must follow a logical path because in method section, the things that you do first, you should reflect them and you should write them first. Suppose you had done a sample size calculation first, so it should come sample size calculation first. Statistical analysis would come at the later stage. So, the sequence of the steps or sequence of the activities that you had carried out as a part of the method should logically follow the path and be clear on what you did and what you did not because that is more important. And it is also important to prepare an outline for the subsections. Do not leave the reader guessing, explain but crisply. Do not think that I will not mention about it because that is a common thing, but people may not know that. So, it is important that you mention about it. At times you can request collaborators to write specific subsections. Like for example, if the statistician is a part of your study group and if you feel that some aspects of sample size calculation, sampling process, statistical analysis has to be written, then the statistician can help you to put things together. Get it peer reviewed. It is also important which I mentioned earlier that you send your map sections to other colleagues who would read those sections and provide you some inputs on from their side and budge to suggestions. It is also important at times we ask people to provide the comments, but generally do not listen to those comments. So, that is not the useful, that is not the purpose all. You can read the comments and if you feel they are uh, reasonable and they are important, you should also revise the manuscript based on those comments and rewrite unless very clear because it is very important unless you are fully satisfied, do not close that section. And this is the most part, this is the most important part which will be very carefully reviewed of your paper. Because if the methods are not properly done, nobody is going to publish your paper, that is more important. Now, move on to the results section. The results presents answer to the question that has been posed as a part of the introduction. And the main rule here is to include relevant findings because you collect data, you analyze, you have so many findings, so many tables, but you have to see that what are the tables which are more relevant and you have to include those tables as a part of your results. Be factual, unequivocal and unambiguous. Judicious mixture of tables and figures is recommended. Avoid repetitions like sometimes people write in the text, in the tables and even in figures the same information that is not recommended in the context of the material that is being presented. How do we do that? Like for example, you can use text, you can use tables, you can use illustrations to present the result, avoid duplication 
that I already mentioned use the logical sequence like some descriptive tables should come first, then the analytical tables would come. Emphasize the importance of observations, include conflicting as well as supporting data and at times the precision is also important. There is no need to mention 1.20567 as a number, you can mention 1.21. So, precision up to that level should be all right and please remember this is not the discussion phase. The here you are not supposed to discuss the findings of the study unless there are certain journals where the results and discussions are put together. Then how to draw tables now? You have to number them consecutively, you have to provide the title, generally vertical lines are not encouraged, no internal horizontal lines generally, it is right justified is recommended, simple formats are useful if you use much more complex formats, people may not be happy about it. One table per page is generally recommended, you use the double spacing while you writing the numbers, clarity should be there and self sufficient uh, should be there to explain the proper information that has been presented into the table. How to draw tables also includes that the minimum number of tables, you cannot have so many tables, use footnotes. If there are bigger tables available, you break them in smaller tables, cite in the text and at times you have to specify the location of the tables like whether it is to be incorporated as a part of methods or results and discussion specify that. Now, coming to the figures because at times you need to provide figures to supplement the data to be presented as a part of your manuscript. Submit the required number of sets. This should be professionally drawn or photographed. Generally freehand is not recommended. Sharp glossy papers, black and white photographic prints they are required. You need to also provide the labels which are pasted on its back, the number and table number, the information that is a figure number and the author's name and top of the figure is the additional information that you provide. Do not write or scratch on the paper clips, do not bend photographs suppose you are submitting along with the papers because they are trying and nowadays digital photographs are being used number them consecutively. Illustrations are critical sometimes, they ask you to provide color negatives or color prints and remember the cost considerations when you use illustrations. And you have to also provide legends for illustrations like separate page that you use a separate page for the legends. You have to also see that double spacing is used, number and title is clarified and explain sometimes the internal scale if you have used for that. Now, coming to the final section of your paper structuring the discussion, it is much more same as that of structuring the abstract. Structure is important so that the readers do not become lost. At times discussion is written in a such a way that people are just get lost into the discussion part. You can follow the consort that is the structure of reporting randomized trials for example. Function of discussion is to convince the readers of the rightness of the author's interpretation of the data that has been generated. The suggested structure for writing a discussion includes that initially you can provide the statement of the principal findings. Then you relate the findings of your study to the research hypothesis. You also take this opportunity to talk about the strength and weaknesses of the study and you can relate the strength and weaknesses of your study with the differences in results with other studies also for that matter. And it also provides you an opportunity to deliberate on possible mechanisms and implications for the clinicians or the policy makers. And finally, you can also talk about if there are some unanswered questions and future research directions. But you remember it is critical that how do you structure the discussion because you need to clarify on the section and you need to also ensure that you reflect on what did you find as a part of your discussion. Should I accept the results? Is it a new finding? Does the finding explain the hypothesis? How does it compare with other studies? Why does the study agree or disagree with others? Where does findings lead to? All these aspects should be part of uh, your discussion. Few additional questions like does it raise new questions? Are there any limitations before accepting or interpreting the results of the study? Does the study have application value and does with limitations also? How important are the conclusions that you generated out of this particular study? are these questions that needs to be reflected and remember that this is the most difficult section to write. Be specific, do not bit about the bush, emphasize the new and important aspects of the study and conclusions that it follow from the results.
do not replicate the result section here. Recommendations when appropriate may be included. If this section is well written, then this could sell your manuscript to a very reputed journal because discussion is something which is a very difficult section. Then coming to a last aspect of your manuscript and that is references. List significant published references. Suppose you have abstract and personal communications and unpublished references, they should be cited only if necessary. Place each reference at the end of the sentence to which it applies. Avoid cross referencing from other articles. The citation must be accurate when you put the reference there and complete the international committee of medical journal editors guidelines like Vanco's guidelines or the Harvard guidelines while writing the manuscripts. The number of references should be consecutively put into the order which they are first mentioned in the text. Identify the references in text, tables and legends. You can provide Arabic numerals into the parenthesis for the references. They should be numbered in accordance with the sequence which is established for the first identification and the style that you would follow could depend on variable from one database to another. Usually recommended is index medicals that is minor modifications. Like for example, I have presented couple of examples for you to see that how the standard journal articles are written. You also need to look at the corporate authorship at times where the no authors are given. You also need to see that uniform requirements are followed, but you follow the reference style which is desired by the journal. Then the next comes specifying acknowledgements. You have to specify the location and that is generally in the manuscript, maybe at the title stage or maybe at the end of the paper appendix to the text and acknowledgement versus authorship we talked about initially about the authorship guidelines. Here I would like to mention that like for example, support by a departmental chair or some technical support or data collection support or some financial and material support, they all ought qualify for acknowledgements and not for the authorship. Function and contributions may be described like for example, somebody has critically looked at the study proposal or has helped you in data collection, but you also remember even if you are acknowledging somebody, you have to take the permission because somebody may then say that I was not consulted when my name was acknowledged into a particular manuscript. And units of measurements because we measurement scales are used follow journal guidelines. Abbreviations and symbols also use only standard abbreviations, avoid abbreviations in the title of abstract, full term of which the above abbreviations should stand should precede in the first use in the text. Most commonly used approved abbreviation to be used which are reported in the literature. So, these are the some careful activity that one has to ensure for. If you need to provide the annexures for tables and illustrations and flowcharts, sometimes definition of variables, sometimes you use a conceptual framework. Some technical specifications are there, some raw data is provided, sometimes the study tools are provided and these are all are provided as annexures for the reference purposes to the journal at the review end. And remember what matters more is language, language matters. You can use medical English dictionaries or thesaurus, you apply spell check, do not use double negatives, use appropriate tenses avoid repetition of words as far as possible, use some short sentences and then you decide that whether you wanted to submit, suppose you are submitting to a British journal, then you use the British spellings. If you are submitting it to the American journals, then you use an American spellings because that is what is required. Have your paper been professionally edited by English grammar, for English grammar that is also important that you can take the help of a language expert to review your manuscript but this is a critical part of any paper. Once the review draft is ready, this review draft must be critically looked by all the authors. You can also ask for external review at your own end. You can request some content expert to look at your paper. You can ask for some methodologist to look at the methods and statistics section. You can even look for the biostatistician who can provide you inputs on statistical issues related to a particular paper. Language expert can be consulted for the language of the paper. You can ask your colleagues also, sometimes you can make a presentation also of a manuscript so that you have everything covered being finally uh, guaranteed upon. Do not finalize manuscript unless you are 
totally satisfied that is more important. I will not talk more in details of covering letter because these were the days where you used to submit paper by post, but nowadays covering letter means just an information that you wanted to submit a particular paper giving a rational of paper and then providing that information as a part of online submission. Then comes the undertaking by authors, follow the journal format. You can have a participation in the study, approval of the final version, sequence of the authors, non-submission to other journal, all these issues needs to be reflected as the undertaking by authors that is to be provided at the time of the submission, which also requires most of the journals for signature of all authors and this is not a numbered page. Manuscript submission checklist includes like whether you have written the cover letter, you have undertaking of the authors, copyright transfer forms are there, you have a title page, abstract, then you have a text, introduction, methods, results, discussion, conclusions, references, tables, illustrations, figures, photographs, legions for illustration, acknowledgements, annexures justification for more than if they have more authors like for example, even in Indian Journal of Public Health, if you have more than 6 authors then as a policy they do not accept papers. Relevant supplementary material at times, then institutional ethics committee and institutional review board clearances, consent statements and sometimes they ask you a disk, but nowadays online submission is there. So, this is not required, number of copies to be produced, all that information needs to be looked at. So, what happens after the paper is submitted at the end of the editorial part? Editorial review and action, the first thing is that you will receive an acknowledgement receipt. Then in-house evaluation is done by the journal staff and generally they send it then for peer review if they find that the article is suitable for their journal to maybe from 2 to 6 referees. Then reviewers comments are sought. Rejected manuscripts are usually communicated quite earlier in 6 to 10 weeks, but potentially acceptable manuscripts might take a longer time for decision making and you might take much more longer time. You also need to get the proofs were corrected and written within 48 hours. Copyright transfer forms are to be signed at the time of when the manuscript and proofs are being finalized. Then reprint order form nowadays is not required because everything is digital, but then you receive the reprints finally as the digital format. What is the action that is required from your end once the paper is published? A letter of thanks, then somebody asks for papers, manuscript then you need to be able to provide that. At times somebody writes a research later on your manuscript then you have to respond to that. You need to provide clarifications which are required at any point in time and it would be embarrassing if you are not able to recollect your own published findings, it is critical. Some information on data and draft storage that even the paper is published it is important and recommended that at least for few years you should have the all details being stored related to the paper. At the time up to 5 years after publication of research authors may be asked to provide the raw data. But what are the consequences? Like suppose it is accepted straight away then you enjoy it, but if it is revision then there is an opportunity for resubmission, but not accepted then what will happen? Not accepted, cool off, take a challenge and say that I can revisit the paper. You can review the reviewers comments, you can revise the manuscript and submit it to another journal and all the best for the next submission. And finally, I just wanted to mention very quickly that why papers are rejected, why we feel that papers are not accepted. At times the study does not address an important scientific issue, then why, but is why somebody should publish that paper. The study is not original, the similar studies are published by some authors and then you just duplicate the study, who is going to publish that paper. The study does not actually test the author's hypothesis. A different type of study should have been done. The study compromises on original study protocol or the sample size is inadequate thereby reflecting on the power of the study. If the statistical analysis is not properly done, if the systematic errors and biases are not resolved properly, the authors drew unjustified conclusions at times from the data, then there is a significant conflict of interest at times and the paper is so badly written that is incomprehensible and therefore the papers are not accepted. You can also look at the guidelines which are available for good publication practices like there are the COPE guidelines and committee on publication ethics which talks on study design, data analysis, authorship, conflict of interest, peer review processes, redundant publication, plagiarism, duties of editors, media relationship, advertising and dealing with the misconduct 
that is what is reflected as a part of the COPE guidelines that you would like to look for. But final statement is that I wanted to say that what is more important that you should enjoy a research paper writing. That is how you contribute to the society and that is how you contribute to the knowledge which then useful in the larger context of the benefits for the people. And therefore, I would say that you should enjoy a research paper writing. Thank you so much for this opportunity.